Welcome back for another episode of Learning Crypto with Amy on the Hacker Noon podcast. This episode is sponsored by Bybit, the cryptocurrency trading platform to take buying, selling, trading, and earning crypto to the next level. Visit Bybit.com to learn more. And on to the episode. Hacker Noon podcast. Ooh, baby, I have taken the jump over to the other side of the world, currently podcasting from the Netherlands. What's up, Amsterdam? Hello. And I am very excited to come back here for the second episode of Learning Crypto with Amy, presented by Hacker Noon and with Utsav. Welcome, everybody. Today, I want to get into a topic that is very prevalent when we talk about cryptocurrency, and that is the blockchain. And also, what the heck is a blockchain? Very confused, so I'm very excited to talk to Utsav today about what the heck a blockchain even is. Let's start there. <laughs> thank you for having me. And for those of you who joined like last week, thank you for listening to us. Hopefully we were able to help you understand the world of cryptocurrencies and blockchain and like the hope over here is that you would learn a lot from us from the conversations that we have so thank you for tuning again this week awesome so let's have, can you tell me what is a blockchain right interesting question so for the programmers out there it's a linked list for the rest of us uh imagine a book right so if you have to find a particular passage in a book or a, a particular place in a book, what do you do? You have two ways to look at it. You could either look at it by the page number or you can look at it by the chapter number, right? So those information that is within the entire story has been chopped up into chapters for easy understanding, maybe for organization purposes, so that you don't read the ending first. Imagine if you had a book's manuscript and you were given the last page first and then the first page last. It would not make a good read. So you okay. basically arrange it logically. If you do that for data points, and if you use that organizational structure, or using a piece of code, like as I said, with a link list, that's a blockchain. So for our understanding's uh, purpose, think of blockchain as a chain of blocks, like hence the word blockchain. Okay. Every block has multiple transactions within it. So if I send you a particular cryptocurrency, let's say, and it doesn't just have to be transfer of money like it could be anything i can go over like layer twos or whatnot but for the purpose of simplicity let's think of like if i send you a particular cryptocurrency what happens is that uh, this particular transaction it goes into a thing which is called a mempool mempool short for memory pool that basically means every transaction goes over there before it gets like sorted like imagine if you have okay. a bunch hold, of things hold on i'm already confused yeah. i have some questions <laughs> right feel free to interrupt me whenever you want like i'm sorry right. if i went off yeah. i need to like gain a visual better like understanding of like what the block is so like the block mm. there's multiple blocks on top of blocks and that's the blockchain right and then within each right. block there are multiple transactions so are you saying like right. in the analogy of the book that the block is like the chapter and then like the individual transactions are like the page numbers yeah yeah okay. exactly okay right i understand okay got it continue yeah. <laughs> right so imagine if you have a bunch of tasks that you need to take care of the first thing that you do is organize them right if you have a bunch of sheets that you want to wash, mm -hmm. wash or if you have a bunch of chores that you want to take care of the first mm -hmm. thing that you do is organize them so that pool which is not organized in the world of bitcoin it is called a mempool every transaction goes over there 
and that's Mem-pool. a transaction. Yeah. Mm. Mempool, like short for memory pool. Memory pool. Okay. Right. And like every transaction has some fees attached to it. There are some like minor rewards, like all the minor rewards are a completely different thing. But basically, uh, there is an incentivization mechanism which uh, makes people which makes the miners want to process those transactions. Uh, shall I go back? I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, but, okay, so I'm... Okay, I, all right, I, all right. I guess I'm trying to like collate two different things into one. Mm-hmm. Let's forget about all of that. Let's use the analogy of the book. Right, so just as you arrange all of the pages in a book in a particular order, and what helps you organize them that is the page number at the bottom right Mm -hmm. so that arrangement of those uh, pages becomes a book Mm -hmm. those arrangements of all of those words within those pages which like makes up the book yeah so think of a transaction as those words those sentences those phrases Okay, no, I feel you. And then the mempool is like if you ripped out all the pages of the book and just scatter them everywhere. Yeah. Think of it like the manuscript. Like imagine there is a book publisher. You write a book and you take your manuscript to them and they have a clumsy assistant who stumbles and lets that manuscript fall. And now all of the pages are pretty much everywhere. Mm-hmm. Think of yourself as an old-timey writer who doesn't have a keyboard and a mouse and mm-hmm. uses to write on a piece of pen and paper. And that particular assistant just basically dropped that manuscript and now it's all over. What a so dumb you assistant. need to arrange them by hand. All right. Okay, yeah. okay, okay, okay. So that's the mempool. And then the blockchain is the organized book that is beautifully published exactly. and ready to go. Okay, I understand. So how many blockchains are there? So the first one was the Bitcoin blockchain. And funnily enough, it wasn't named as like anything. Now we have different blockchains which uh, propose to do different things. For example, the Bitcoin blockchain, which can process only a certain number of transactions per minute. Seven was that number, if I'm not wrong. And people who want to criticize it use that number to say, hey, but Visa can process hundreds and thousands of transactions per minute. So Bitcoin is the Bitcoin blockchain has a certain purpose to it. Then there is the Ethereum blockchain, which has a certain purpose to it. Okay. Then there is Solana, there is Polkadot, there is Freeton. There are like multiple blockchains, Binance Smart Chain. So Whoa. what happens okay. is that uh, building your own blockchain is very easy. Okay. Like you could pretty much copy paste a line of code and that becomes a blockchain. As long as you have one block followed by the other block and these blocks are linked and that chain cannot be broken. Like Although it can be broken because there would not be a lot of people behind it. Mm -hmm. But as long as you can create a chain of two, that is a blockchain because it is a block and a chain. What is a block though? Like what is the block? So a block, think of it as an organization of those transactions. Like, for example, I could have the entire book from page one to 1,000. Mm-hmm. I don't need to have chapters, do I? Mm-hmm. I don't need to have chapters. So these chapters just serve for more of an indexing thing. Mm-hmm. Or if I want to find a particular portion of that book pretty fast, okay. I could look at it by the chapter number. So blocks serve as a mechanism for that. And there are controversies which say that the block sizes should be bigger or as they like to call it, the block height. So basically what they wanna say is, my block can only hold five transactions, but I am gonna build some other blockchain where it can hold 20 transactions. So my blockchain is better. Mm, Then there would be somebody who would say, who would say, okay, your blockchain can do 20 transactions, mine can process it faster. Mm -hmm. Then the other person would like stand up and say, but mine can basically have something like a persistent script, which is like basically smart contracts. So every blockchain like 
developer or like the team behind it, they come up with their own USPs. The Bitcoin blockchain, because it is the oldest, has its own USP as digital gold. Like it serves as a ledger for transferring value from one person to the other. Mm-hmm. Ethereum's blockchain, best known for smart contracts. Solana's blockchain, best known for those degenerate like NFT, those like NFT guys. They mm-hmm. like to be called degenerates or degenerates. Those so degenerates. All right. Yeah. <laughs> And like it had the claims to be the fastest blockchain ever at 63,000 or 45,000 transactions per second, which was like very recently broken by the guys at Freeton who have 63,000 or something like that transactions per second. So it's a speed thing. It's a functionality thing. Mm -hmm. So pretty much anybody can have their own blockchain. There are multiple which Uh cropped up in the 2017 ICOs and more and more will continue to how many though like unlimited like an uncountable number or so it's not as high as the number of tokens itself like the big ones are few but Mm -hmm. then there are like many jenny come lately to use a gendered way of saying things but like yeah there are multiple blockchains that exist for example Mm -hmm. there is one called polygon or stylized at 0x uh, polygon. So it started as uh, something that was built on top of the Ethereum blockchain. But now that they have become bigger, they are like, let's build, let's build our own blockchain. Mm. Okay. Same happened with the guys at Binance. They were a cryptocurrency exchange. They still are the world's biggest. In time, they were like, I think we are big enough that we can build our own chain and do everything cheaper. Mm -hmm. And hence Binance Smart Chain was born. Okay. Now with the blocks, you say that it has to be, to be a blockchain, you need to chain the blocks together. How is that done? Right. So uh, think of it again, like I want to use that analogy of the book again. So basically every block has uh, two parts, a head and a body, right? The head of one block is connected to the like body of the second block. So okay. there is a chain of sorts that exists. So every time you wanna like, let's say if you have a block or a chain of blocks, each of these blocks would be connected to the block that comes after it and the one that comes before it. But how? The first block, I'm sorry. But how? I'm sorry. How do how, how? do so they get how connected? Is it connected? Mm-hmm. So connection happens like again via code. So there is this immutable hash thing called a root hash. So mm-hmm. how they do that is they wanna make sure that the block, the ordering of the blocks happens in the same order every time. So let's mm-hmm. say if you create a block and I create a block and your block comes out first my block comes out later so what we will do or like what the blockchain will do is let's say password protect your block and then encrypt it or in the world of blockchain as they like to call hash it and they would take that hash and give it to me Mm. and then you start your new block yeah so now what happens is if a bad actor tries to change something on your transactions or the transactions in your block, your hash would change, your encryption would change, right? Mm -hmm. So in that event, a good actor would only have to see the hash which is stored in mine, Mm -hmm. right? Right. So if something gets changed on your block, everybody would be able to find out that okay something got changed because the subset because the subsequent like right. block has a different number than the block which we are getting now mm-hmm. okay so if, i have questions yeah. about blockchain security but first right. i want to know if you're doing a let's if you're writing your book right at what stage do you decide that you're making the new chapter aka the new block right so in terms of this these are 
determined by the block height to get a bit like a bit technical so block heights are basically how many transactions can happen in a particular block and these are not exactly determined by the number of transactions but the actual size of that particular transaction in bytes so bytes. imagine if, yeah so like it's like this your a uh, book can only be 5 mb so mm. think of it like that so oh, it works like that yeah so it's so like theoretically dependent. you could have three large transactions or 30 small ones right like something like that yes okay. like yeah so okay that is how that works yeah okay okay now let's go back to blockchain security so how often are people able to change the hash changing the hash like what happens is basically you cannot change the hash a uh, hashing is a process okay. which basically creates a, a particular key or a string so what they use is a hashing algorithm called sha256 some use a uh, kcat or like whatever but these are all algorithm what happens okay. is you could put anything in that algorithm and it will convert it into a 16 uh, character long string or a 32 character long string that mm-hmm. string would be unique mm-hmm. so if you remember when like i don't want to say me but when people used to use a uh, pirate bay or what not what would happen was every book or every movie that was on there they mm-hmm. would also have a checksum hash by this algorithm called called md5 that served as the verification that the person who uploaded that movie is the same person who has uploaded it on pirate bay mm-hmm. so it serves as a signature of sorts imagine if there is a document and you sign it you would know whether it is your signature or not mm-hmm. right so now imagine if there was a seal of sorts instead of a signature because you have to sign multiple times that c is very much like what you would call a hashing algorithm but every time that seal is unique so you could uh, take that same piece of data and hash it multiple times and you would still get the same uh, string mm-hmm. so what i'm trying to get at is imagine there is a process where if the input is the same the output would be the same okay okay yeah so talking of blockchain security nobody cares about changing the output what they want to change is the transactions before the hashing process or even after the hashing process let's say that i send you one one bitcoin i wish i could i don't have that much but imagine if i send you one bitcoin and then at the same time before the transaction has been processed i also send one bitcoin to my wife mm-hmm. my wallet only had one bitcoin mm-hmm. so that is called a double spending problem mm-hmm. what the blockchain will do is make sure that only one of these transaction gets processed mm-hmm. imagine if that one bitcoin which i sent to you got processed first so what would happen is that when i like also send that one bitcoin to my wife that transaction would fail mhm because yeah. what has happened is my uh, bitcoin when it went to you when it got hashed when it got added to a block it had been processed now it is in your wallet yeah right so i cannot like spend your wallet uh your like bitcoin mhm and the same thing happens on the other side as well so the uh, system or the block because of its hashing mechanism what it does is make sure that a signature of sort of the previous block is placed on the new block yes and then every subsequent block would have a signature of the previous block mhm so now if i want to go back in time and change the transaction let's say that i am a super hacker of sorts and i am like able to change the transaction which i sent to you because i want to give that to my wife now 
So mm-hmm. what happens over there is that I would like when I change that transaction, that signature would change, right? So when that signature changes, I would have to go to the next block and change that signature as well. So that when I change that, you. exactly. Okay. And then when I change that, because I am this amazing hacker, which I am not, I have to go to the next block and change their hash, because that hash would change as well. Okay. So every time you change, like so, that is like what is called the law of the blocks in a way. Is that if a transaction, as a transaction gets older and older in time, it becomes very hard to crack it, because mm-hmm. for every change in transaction. you would have to change every block subsequent After to that. After that, right. Got it. Right. So But then the won't they amount... be like, oh, well, the first block was this one, so it was probably this one that changed? Oh, I'm sorry. I did not get it. Like when the hacker hacks into the their their own block, like changes their own block or r- mm-hmm. record, and then has to subsequently change all of the ones that follow that, wouldn't the... Mm-hmm. people who secure the blockchain just be like this one was the first transaction where the hash changed or whatever changed and so therefore it's prob- this one is probably the bad actor right so i would just change one thing over here is that there are no people expected to take care of the security of the blockchain <gasps> okay the oh beauty- whoa Yeah. Who sends out the notices of the piracy when you use the pirate bay but for the blockchain is the government coming after me who's keeping the blockchain secure There is no such thing as a need for a security like for pirate bay there are stories like first of all they move to the Netherlands if i am not wrong no they move to Sweden or Switzerland one of those countries because they had very strong laws against like uh, freedom of like laws for freedom of speech or what not so a website needs to be hosted on a server yes if there is no way by which a website can be connected to the internet that website is dead yeah so the us used the power of their like freedom and they were like you need to shut that website down find those servers and take them down there have been cases where servers were located in abandoned caves people <laughs> found them people took them down some are still up cross proxies exist so you could take down a pirate bay you cannot take down bitcoin similarly uh, because the could, government is like, coming after pirate bay but the government's not coming after the people that alter the blockchain like the government can but then it would be like you would be have to arrest everybody who ever used like the pirate bay or anybody who uh-huh, had it because uh-huh. nobody owns all of the movie mm-hmm. what a torrent does was basically chopping up a movie into thousands of different parts and all of those people who had that movie would have only like bits and pieces of it without mm-hmm. even mm-hmm. you cannot play that bit it's not as if that you had that one song and i had some other action scene no it would be uh bits and bytes so i wouldn't have the movie i would have plausible deniability i could yeah. say hey but i use this only for downloading linux operating system which is free to download which nobody and they wouldn't know the because there's no blockchain to tell them the truth about what actually happened right so uh blockchains are very similar to the torrent networks Okay. You cannot shut that down unless you shut down everybody who has it. Oh. Just like like just like the torrent protocols unless everybody uninstalled like BitTorrent or QTorrent or MuTorrent like whatever okay, unless okay, everybody okay. does that it doesn't happen. All right. Same for Okay, blockchain. but we're getting sidetracked on the on the pirate bay thing. The bottom line is is the blockchain secure? The blockchain is uh so the word that we use is hacking a blockchain is not feasible we don't use the word it is not possible because every blockchain out there has been hacked because at mm-hmm. the end of the day it is a piece of code and a code can be like can be altered to do whatever you want it to do 
bugs would happen. The Microsofts have had bugs. The Apples have had bugs. Mm-hmm. The blockchain was built by people like who did not have the kind of like monetary power behind them as a Microsoft would. So it is pretty secure by an economic incentivization mechanism. What the blockchain holds as a fact is every person should act in their own best interests. Mm -hmm. So what a blockchain does is try to make a system or rather it has made a system where if everybody acts in their own best interests, the blockchain would be secure. Mm -hmm. So as long as a majority or at least 50% of the people who are serving as validators for those transactions, you can call them miners, as long as at least 50% of them are doing the right thing, which is like saying one plus one equals two and not three, Mm -hmm. the blockchain is secure. But what happens to the people that do the wrong thing? How do they get reprimanded? So it is about the computing powers on the proof of work blockchain. So you must have heard about the climate change problems caused by blockchains, but not by those polluting factories. Like, I don't know how that works, but there is a claim against blockchains that they are like causing the biggest global warming event since like the birth of Christ or whatnot. So uh, what happens there is that you need to spend an amount of computing power and your CPU power to be able to mine a block. You need to solve a very complex question which is generated by the the, uh, system. So what it would do is it would give you a a series of numbers and say, find me another number, which when I hash will create this particular number preceded by five zeros. Mm -hmm. So it becomes a very specific number where again, it would be very hard to find, but if somebody has found it, then it's very easy to check. Yeah. So it's very hard for the person who who finds it for the first time. So imagine if the person who finds it for the first time is a bad actor. And he is like, I'll do whatever, I'll do this, I'll I'll pass pass this transaction. But when he submits that block, what would the people say? Okay, Mm -hmm. that's the wrong block. I will not work on that block because it's wrong. So they would go back to the previous block where they were and use the other block. Okay. So as long as the chain, like what the Bitcoin blockchain does is basically it follows the longest chain. There would Mm -hmm. be branches where there would be bad actors, but each of these branches, they get pruned pretty fast. Mm. So there would never be a case where there are side transactions happening because it was on that that gets pruned, that transaction would get rejected eventually. Mm -hmm. Mm. So it is secure in that belief that there is an economic incentivization for the miners to do the right thing. Yeah. All right. Well, we're going to get more into the Bitcoin blockchain next time and what that's all about. But I think that was good for now on what the heck is a blockchain. So I hope that everybody has gained a better understanding just as I have on the blockchain. Wait, hold on. I have one more question. This is really important. Let's talk about blockchain terminology. Do you call it a blockchain, the blockchain, or just blockchain? So it depends. Like the blockchain could be something that I would have used in up until 2013 or 14 when there was largely only one okay the bitcoin blockchain now there are so many that you could say a blockchain uh, but like yeah i usually capital capitalize the b in the blockchains mm-hmm. as my support for the blockchain community do you need just an article like the- before blockchain though like can you just refer to it as blockchain or do you have to say a blockchain or I would, have an, blockchain? I, I would have an article over there like a All right. polygons blockchain serves as the article the way mm-hmm. i see it but mm-hmm. i wouldn't like think of it as 
put it on the internet if there are multiple versions of the internet mm mm-hmm. think of the blockchain like as having multiple versions of the internet everybody has their own yes okay got it understood thank you very much utsav for joining me on amy learns crypto i have learned something today so that is excellent we are achieving our purposes next time we will go over the bitcoin blockchain stay weird and i will see you on the internet bye 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 thank you for having me